Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us. Our strategy of making fresh Krispy Kreme donuts more available around the world is working. And the excitement the brand creates has never been higher. This photo is from the recent opening of a hot light theater in Ankara, Turkey, showing consumers lining up for our amazing original glazed donuts hot off the production line. I want to thank our teams around the world for the great job they are doing making our fresh donuts available in more places and for reminding people of the joy that is Krispy Kreme, not just to eat, but to share and give to others. And as of tomorrow, Krispy Kreme will be available in 40 countries with the opening of our first hot light theater in Morocco. The continuing strength of the brand and our strategy is reflected in our strong second quarter results. Organic revenue grew 7.8%, driven by our innovative specialty donut collections, which continue to resonate with our consumers. Our global points of access continue to grow, increasing by 23% year over year. Our recently announced expansion into Spain means that fresh Krispy Kreme donuts will be available in four of Europe's largest markets next year. We are well on our way to our goal of 33,000 points of access by the end of 2026. In the U.S., our profitable expansion is accelerating, which led to a U.S. margin increase of 80 basis points in the quarter. And we expect that as we build and optimize our hub and spoke network, the efficiency benefits will continue to drive profitability. The recent sale of Insomnia Cookies allows us to focus on our core strategy of producing, selling, and distributing fresh donuts daily, whilst also further improving our financial profile. I'm thankful for the partnership with Insomnia Cookies over the past five Please years. Please vote on this. And look forward it's to our poll. success going forward as a minority Here comes shareholder. the link. Focused on fresh donuts, now excluding Insomnia Cookies, we expect full-year organic revenue growth of 5 to 7%. In a moment, Jeremiah will provide more details on the impact of the transaction and full-year guidance as we continue on our journey of building a bigger and better Krispy Kreme in 2024 and beyond. Let's expand on each of these key messages, starting with the continuing sales growth in Q2. We saw fantastic engagement with our brand again this quarter, with more than 27 billion media impressions, as we capitalized on buzzworthy events like the solar eclipse, as well as successful specialty donuts, including our Dolly Parton and Kit Kat collections. Deliver Fresh Daily sales were up 18% globally and 22% in the US, where we have been driving donut category growth for our grocery and convenience store customers for more than a year now. Digital sales grew 22%, with the April relaunch of our U.S. loyalty program, making the experience easier and more rewarding for our consumers. We can now deploy personalized consumer engagement across 15 million loyalty members. That's 27% more than a year ago. Our biggest opportunity is to make it easier for people to buy our fresh donuts. We are doing this by increasing availability through our donut shops, online, and by delivering fresh daily to grocers, convenience stores, and quick service restaurants. And the pace of our expansion is accelerating. To reach our goal of 33,000 by 2026, we're expanding with existing customers, new customers, and indeed in new markets. With existing customers such as Walmart, which still only lists us in about 25% of their stores, we are exploring the opportunity to go nationwide. We have agreed to expand with Target, a new customer, later this year, and we are engaged in joint business planning with them to bring fresh donuts daily to their stores nationwide. In new markets, our expansion in France and soon Spain, Germany and Brazil provides the opportunity for thousands more points of access. In Paris, we've quickly grown to five shops already, all supported by a single producing hub, and we have plans to enter DFD next year. In the US, our accelerated national expansion provides an opportunity to profitably densify our network. We currently have more than 8,000 points of access in the US. We remain on track to add more than 12,000 McDonald's 
and about 3,000 with partners like Walmart and Target, bringing the goal to nearly 23,000 US points of access by the end of 2026. We are very pleased with our partnership with McDonald's. The national rollout begins this fall with the Midwest starting in Chicago. We expect to serve fresh donuts in more than 1,000 McDonald's restaurants by the end of the year, add 5,000 in 2025, and 6,000 in 2026, bringing us to more than 85% of their U.S. footprint. Our team is hard at work modernizing the making and moving of donuts. We have a dedicated team partnering with our customers, including McDonald's, to ensure a smooth rollout. We are hiring and training experts in manufacturing operations, upgrading our donut production lines, continuously improving the manufacturing process, and optimizing our delivery logistics network with improved routing and upgrades to our fleet. This expansion effort will increase utilization of our production hubs and distribution density. Today, our 151 US hubs with spokes each serve on average 50 points of access. We expect this to increase to over 100 by 2026, improving efficiency and profitability. Take, for example, Chicago, where we expect to support 450 new delivered fresh daily doors with the same number of hubs as we have today. In addition to leveraging existing capacity, we'll be making selective investments in geographies which have limited access to Krispy Kreme today. Last quarter, I discussed adding 30 new hubs over the next three years to support the expansion. We're on track to achieve this goal and have 17 of the 30 hubs already underway including Seattle, Minneapolis, and Philadelphia. With this, we are well positioned to deploy Deliver Fresh Daily in all major metropolitan markets in the US. And now I'll hand it over to Jeremiah to discuss our overall financial performance and the impact of the recent Insomnia Cookies transaction. Thanks, Josh. I'll begin with our strong second quarter results. Organic growth was 7.8%. Adjusted EBITDA increased 12.1%, resulting in positive operating leverage with adjusted EBITDA margin expansion of 60 basis points to 12.5%. Turning to our U.S. segment results, the consumer engagement we saw in the quarter resulted in organic revenue growth of 8.4%. Points of access growth was 17.8% year over year as we added new doors with several key customers in new stores, including Stop and Shop and Target. Average revenue per door increased to $657 driven by price and specialty donut collections. This quarter, we saw a 6.4% increase in sales per hub to $5 million, which is a key measure of hub productivity. This helped deliver adjusted EBITDA growth of 16.4% to $32.7 million. Margins improved 80 basis points year over year to 11.3% driven by increased utilization and tight control of SG&A. This was partially offset by increased promotional activity and startup costs for the McDonald's launch in the fall. Within our equity-owned international markets, organic revenue grew 5% with all markets growing in the quarter, led by Canada and Japan. We continue to add points of access across the network, including Coles in Australia and OXO in Mexico. Adjusted EBITDA declined 12.3%, primarily driven by the UK market, which resulted in an adjusted EBITDA margin of 17.3%. We're focused on improving results in the UK where performance has not been up to our expectations. We've completed the consolidation of three sites which should yield benefits in the back half of the year and are taking further actions to ensure we restore margin levels in this market. In our market development segment, organic revenue grew 16.1% as equipment sales increased year over year, system-wide sales grew in most markets, most notably in South Korea, where digital sales and donut innovation have driven successful results. Adjusted EBITDA in the segment grew 22.7%, with margin expansion driven by greater flow-through from product sales. For the second quarter, we delivered $0.05 cents in adjusted earnings per share. The higher depreciation and amortization in the quarter reflects the investments associated with the expansion of our Hub and Spoke network and Insomnia Cookies' rapid growth. Consistent with our plan, 
we delivered cash flow from operations in the second quarter of $33 million, taking us to $15.5 million year to date. Since closing the quarter, we have strengthened our balance sheet following the sale of a majority ownership stake in Insomnia Cookies. We received $127.4 million in cash proceeds upon closing on July 17th and have since collected an additional $45 million following an Insomnia Cookies refinancing of intercompany debt. As a result, we expect our next leverage ratio to trend toward 3.5 times by year end and remain on track to our long-term goal of 2.0 times to 2.5 times by the end of 2026. Let me turn to our full year guidance, which now reflects the sale of a majority ownership stake in Insomnia Cookies, improving the long-term financial profile of the business. On the left, you can see our previous guidance with a full year contribution from Insomnia. The middle column represents the back half impact of the transaction. And on the right-hand side, you see Krispy Kreme's updated full year guidance, which reflects the removal of insomnia from the second half of the year. By removing the previously forecasted $120 million of insomnia revenue from the guidance, we now expect net revenue of $1.65 to $1.685 billion. Consistent with our prior assumption, that insomnia would have a 100 basis point impact to our overall growth, we expect organic growth of 5% to 7% for the full year. Removing insomnia's second half adjusted EBITDA results in Krispy Kreme adjusted EBITDA of $215 to $220 million for 2024. As with all of these updates, the change to adjusted EPS solely reflects the recent sale of insomnia. We now expect between 24 and 28 cents for the year. We are also providing the following modeling assumptions, an income tax rate of between 28 and 30%, capital expenditures of seven to 8% of net revenue, and interest expense of 55 to $60 million down from our prior guidance of 55 to $65 million, reflecting our lower net debt levels. With regards to the third quarter, we recognize the changing consumer dynamic and continue to respond to it. As a reminder, Q3 will reflect the removal of insomnia, and as a result, we expect third quarter net revenue of $370 to $383 million, with adjusted EBITDA of $38 to $41 million. We remain confident in our ability to execute throughout the remainder of 2024. With that, I'll turn it over to Josh for his closing remarks. Thanks, Jeremiah. I'm excited for what we have ahead in the balance of the year particularly in our high season, which begins in September and runs through the year-end holidays. In summary, we are focused on expanding fresh donut availability by adding high-quality, productive points of access, driving operating leverage through the efficiency of our operating model, and maximizing capital return, both by leveraging existing capacity and making selective investments in geographies which have limited access to Krispy Kreme today. All in, I look forward to us building a bigger and better Krispy Kreme in the years ahead. Operator, let's now open it up to Q&A, please. We will now begin the question and answer session. In order to ask a question. Please tap the like button and subscribe. Here on the main channel, we are covering Krispy Kreme. On the extra channel, we are covering Plug Power. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, I wanted to ask about, you mentioned the, the McDonald's rollout um, and, and just basically thinking about, are, are you still, it's twofold, are you still on track? I think the idea had been to kind of increase rateably the number of stores over time. Does that still um, sound like the right kind of uh, rollout plan? And as a second point is, you know, I think you had, we'd seen some pretty significant investment ahead of that, um, whether it was an OPEX or GNA. Are the, the biggest kind of chunkiest increases behind us? And so going forward, um, you know, the, the growth rate in, in operating expense should you know, lag or at least more closely match um, revenues. Thanks. So yeah, good morning. Um, yeah, the McDonald's uh, partnership is is going very well in general. Um, and the rollout is 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 on track. We we announced today that we will be first listing. Uh, and with McDonald's beyond the Kentucky pilot in the fall in Chicago and then expanding 
through the Midwest uh, in the back end of this year and then obviously into next year. Uh, we expect to be in, in more than a thousand McDonald's restaurants by the end of 2024. Uh, and then uh, we have a rollout plan that we have um, partnered with McDonald's on uh, through 2025 and indeed through 2026 with about 5,000 we're expecting to add um, generally evenly through the year of, of 2025. Um, we, we have um, a, a dedicated cross-functional team uh, there to, to make sure the facilities and, and our people are ready. In fact, we're also making improvements to the production lines um, uh, and, and even doing uh, our best to improve productivity uh, and, and up our game as we go. We're very focused on delivering a really high quality service to the McDonald's restaurants so that people get awesome fresh donuts every day at the same quality level they'd expect in Krispy Kreme and other channels. Perhaps Jeremiah, do you want to talk about some of the, the impacts of that? Yeah, and, and Josh, you did a nice job. Good morning, Sarah, um, and thanks for the question. To ensure a smooth rollout, we are investing ahead of the opportunity with dedicated rollout teams uh, to support our shops in, in training and development costs. We're also improving capabilities across our manufacturing and operations uh, teams and upgrading our donut production lines, as you can imagine, uh, the, the volume that will move through. All of this has been included in our guide. Ongoing, uh, we expect to manage costs prudently and deliver margin expansion as we ramp the McDonald's network, serving nearly 85% of the brand's U.S. footprint by 2026, as Josh mentioned. Thank you. The next question comes from the line of Raul Crow with JP Morgan. Please go ahead. Good morning, guys. Uh, thanks for the great update today. Uh, I'd like to focus on the nationwide rollout of Walmart and Target, and this is, I feel, is a very big step for you guys. Uh, I think today, as I understand, there are around 4,000 to 5,000 doors untapped just between these two brands versus the 3,000 odd uh, non McDonald's doors you guys discussed for the guidance over the next three years. So, as you expand the hub and spoke infrastructure, is it fair to expect there will be almost no additions or very low uh, or a lower mix of convenience stores or low volume doors additions as we go along expanding this uh, side of the business and also will profitability follow this? Uh, um, I, I'm glad. Good morning, Raul. It's, it's important to understand that the McDonald's nationwide expansion is, is a bit of a catalyst for us. Um, it, it enables us uh, to really expand our DFD uh, business um, faster than we would have been able to otherwise. And so we're focused on naturally the high quality national players. You mentioned Walmart, Target. Uh, Kroger uh, uh, and, and others uh, uh, all fit the bill, all ways of getting our, our, our consumers uh, those fresh donuts and, and making it easier for them uh, to purchase them than it is today. Um, so, you know, we're in discussions with Walmart uh, about how as our um, hubs uh, are available uh, to produce donuts in more and more markets, we can get it to those additional Walmart stores. Uh, we began uh, discussions with Target as well, uh, and they've evolved quickly. Uh, and we're, we've recently expanded with Target in Phoenix and Atlanta, and we've got plans to come to LA, Detroit, and several cities uh, as uh, we build out uh, the network um, uh, with the rollout of, of McDonald's. So it's, it really is a great combination. Uh, C stores um, uh, and other um, smaller locations, smaller lo lower traffic locations are actually still very helpful to us, though, because if you think all the places you go on the way to a McDonald's, Target, Walmart, Kroger, you're going to be going past uh, convenience stores, gas stations, uh, making the logistics route efficient. And um, so we still see uh, a role for those to play. But naturally, we're focused on those big national partners that the McDonald's uh, program unlocks for us. Uh, thanks for that. And I have a follow-up on the international side. 
Can you discuss uh, the details on what's happening in the UK market today? There has been concerns around broader softening demand in the QSR space. I'm just curious to understand how uh, Krispy Kreme's business in that core market is holding up. How is it tracking relative to your expectations? Uh, anything here would be helpful. Well, it's true that the UK has been a challenge that we're focused on, but it is important to understand that the majority of our near 40 international markets continue to perform very well. I mean, we have company owned Japan, Canada, Australia, most of our franchisee partners, newly opened France, all performing very well. And and indeed, the UK is still growing. It's just at a slower rate than the others. uh, And profitability has been uh, disappointing as a result. but the team have created uh, some local buzz recently in July with specialty donuts following the strategy that's worked out uh, elsewhere. They, they uh, celebrated the TV show Friends. Uh, just yesterday, uh, we announced upgrades to the core donut range uh, coming in Q3. So there's a lot of adaptation to those conditions you described that the team uh, are doing well, uh, not just on the, the top line. Um, oh, actually, you know, also worth mentioning uh, about 200 secondary displays in grocery stores that are working well in larger supermarkets, act, expansion into convenience stores. So uh, a lot of focused effort uh, to get the UK uh, back up to the levels we're seeing in other international markets, all whilst managing the cost side as well that Jeremiah covered earlier. So, you know, I, I understand why you ask about the UK. We're closely monitoring uh, and supporting the team there to make sure we get performance back up to the levels we're seeing elsewhere. Really appreciate the color, uh, Josh. Uh, good luck for the rest of the year. Thank you. Your next question comes from the line of Bill Chapel with Truist. Please go ahead. Thanks. Good morning. Hey, just uh, Josh, just a, a quick follow up on the UK. I was, an, I mean, I thought the, the the impression that more of the issue was a regulatory one. And that you were start to be kind of lapping that. So maybe any update there in terms of just, you know, are you lapping it? Should things get better on their own? You know, is it getting any worse? Or are you hearing more noise on that front? You know, just from from that standpoint, it would be great. Hi, Bill. Yeah, I mean the regulatory changes you're referencing associated largely impact in terms of where displays can be placed in a in a grocery store. Um, associated with regulations around uh, the merchandising of sweet treats there. That that definitely has been a challenge for the team, and and hence the secondary displays I mentioned, the the, uh, additional expansion into convenience stores. These are are great tactics the teams have employed. Um, We are lapping the the initial uh, impact of those regulations to your question, um, but it obviously has uh, brought a a, a structural uh, effect onto the market. Um, but then, you know, when you step back and look at uh, the brand, the donuts, um, uh, the um, how it, the consumer is resonating with our product, th- there's definitely an opportunity in the UK, hence uh, focus on uh, upgrading the core donuts, bringing out specialty donuts as we see in other markets. And the team are really leaning into that. So uh, obviously the the macroeconomic environment has been relatively challenged in the UK, but our teams generally focus on uh, these amazing moments of joy, uh, celebratory occasions. And so looking forward, uh, I know they're really getting behind uh, all the big special occasions we have in the high season months ahead of us. As a reminder, if you'd like to ask a question, Please press star, followed by the number one on your telephone keypad. Your next question comes from the line of Dan Guglielmo with Capital One Securities. Please go ahead. Hello, everyone. Thank you for taking my questions. Um, Just around like the big U.S. relationship expansion, so McDonald's, Target, and and then possibly Walmart, will you all need to hire in the U.S.? in the second half of this year, or can the existing employee base kind of handle most of that? Well, uh, obviously we're gearing up for expansion already. Um, In many ways, that is making sure that we've got uh, extra drivers uh, in place to get the donuts out there. That's the main hiring initiative we'd expect. 
Um, in the early months, uh, nearly all of the expansion is serviced by existing production hubs. Um, so it's quite small, the amount of extra labor we need uh, to support the production there. We do have teams focused on partnering uh, with, with the customers. You can imagine in customer service uh, and in marketing. And for example, our respective marketing teams are working closely together with the McDonald's team, you know, so that people know Krispy Kreme is coming to McDonald's. So, you know, there is investment there. Um, but the overall message uh, is that the expansion of Deliver Fresh Daily in the U.S. is leveraging an underutilized system. The additional densification of all that distribution means you get flow through to the bottom line, as we saw in this quarter, in the second quarter, which we're pleased to see. You know, overall organic growth uh, and, and basis point improvement it reflects the, the model we have here. And so, you know, recruitment of the right people to support that um, is important, um, but it isn't a, a big concern. In fact, uh, it's really exciting to see how we're growing. Great, great. Yeah, that, um, that's that's very helpful. Um, and just kind of as a, a follow up to that, just kind of U.S. macro a little bit. Um, the, the new employees, kind of that you're bringing bringing on, like how has the labor environment looked? Is it competitive? Um, just kind of curious from from your guys' view. Yeah, it's it's um, Krispy Kreme has been well positioned. I feel uh, people love working at a Krispy Kreme. It's a great environment to work in. Um, and so, uh, generally across the board, we've 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 been able to to recruit great talent and great people uh, uh, across the system. And uh, there were stages where hiring drivers was a little more difficult. Uh, we're not seeing the same challenge. Uh, I think the labour environment uh, has eased up on that on that uh, side. And so, yeah, the 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 main thing we're focused on and making sure that all those folks are, are trained and supported that the equipment is uh, in, in tip-top condition, that we have optimized our delivery routes, um, or also that we can service our customers' needs. Great, thank you. Your next question comes from the line of Bill Chapel with Truist. Please go ahead. Thanks, sorry, me again, I get cut off. Um, hey, Bill, just, just, hello again. Um, just a question on Chicago, you know, why that's the next city. Uh, it's obviously different from the Kentucky cities. Um, it's in the backyard and front yard of McDonald's headquarters. And, uh, but, and I don't know what kind of your existing presence is compared to other cities. Uh, so maybe you could just kind of explain the thought process behind that and kind of how that may be different or not from what you've seen in Lexington and Louisville. Well, yeah, um, we, it is certainly different, um, um, but we're excited to, to be there at the home of McDonald's. Um, we're guided by their teams uh, where uh, they prefer to um, roll out first, uh, only constrained by uh, our uh, existing capacity. Uh, as I mentioned earlier in the call, you know, we're investing in, in, in selectively in key markets around the country, um, you know, identifying and even uh, getting commitments on sites in places like Minneapolis and Boston that we don't have production, and we'll come to those later. Um, but in Chicago, uh, we have three hubs with spokes already. Um, they have excess capacity. In fact, in one of the sites, we have uh, a, a hub with more than one production line, um, uh, and so it, it's made complete sense to to start in a place where we we had that. Um, you know, as we think about our hubs going forward, we're really working on creating streamlined, sort of high efficiency sites that seamlessly integrate DFD and retail operations. And and we actually uh, already have somewhere that we've been able to to uh, with modest investment uh, set up in that way. So I feel really confident about starting out in Chicago. We have uh, a nice presence across the Midwest in general. So um, to you know, get going with a really positive, uh, strong momentum from the start um, made sense for both of us. So we're excited uh, for the teams there. Great, thanks so much. I'll now turn the call back over to Josh Charlesworth for closing remarks. Please go ahead. 
Yeah, well, thanks everyone for the questions. Really appreciate it. Thank you for your interest in Krispy Kreme today. Obviously, a strong results and the strategy is working. So, uh, really pleased uh, to share with you that today. And of course, thank you to all our Krispy Kremers for your ongoing commitment to bring joy to our customers through Krispy Kreme around the world. Thank you very much.